Google has just changed the AI landscape forever with their latest announcements. That's right, just a few hours ago, Google held their annual I.O. conference and revealed some pretty insane developments in the world of AI. And I gotta say, it's pretty impressive. Hello humans, my name is Kenyo Air Overload, and yeah, Google really just swept the floor with the competition thanks to their latest AI announcements during their I.O. conference. Which, if you don't know, I.O. is the annual Google Developer Conference where they present a bunch of new tech, new hardware, new software, new updates, and this year's conference was really different from the others because it was all about AI. So in this video, let's take a look at what they showed, what this means for the future for us the users, and then at the end, let's play a little bit with one of the tools already available right now for us to try out and see how good it is. So that being said, sit back, relax, get your popcorn ready, and let's go. So Google started the conference by introducing Help Me Write for Gmail, which simply put will allow you to easily write a new email using the power of AI, just as if you had ChatGPT running in the background. Next, they show some pretty cool updates to Google Photos, like the ability to search certain elements present in your photos, as well as a brand new super cool tool called Magic Editor, so take a look. Say you're on a hike and you stop to take a photo in front of a waterfall. You wish you had taken your bag off for the photo, so let's go ahead and remove that back strap. The photo feels a bit dark, so you can improve the lighting, and maybe you want to even get rid of some clouds to make it feel as sunny as you remember it. Looking even closer, you wish you had posed so it looks like you're really catching the water in your hand. No problem, you can adjust that. Let's look at one more photo. And it looks like the balloons got cut off in this one. So you can go ahead and reposition the birthday boy. Magic Editor automatically recreates parts of the bench and balloons that were not captured in the original shot. As a finishing touch, punch up the sky, it changes the lighting in the rest of the photo so the edit feels consistent. Then Google presented their brand new LNM model called Palm 2, model that will actually come in different sizes, where the smallest is so optimized that it could be able to run on a mobile device locally. Now, they never said that they were released those models to the public, but who knows. Now, Palm 2 is a very powerful model that features improved support for writing, debugging, and generating code with just a simple sentence. They also introduced some fine-tuned versions of Palm 2, such as MedPalm 2, which is a Palm 2 model aligned to the medical domain to be able to more accurately answer very specific medical questions, even sometimes as well as a real medical expert, so that's very impressive. Then, the next most notable announcement is the upcoming release of a new language model called Gemini. Now, although Google already has an LNM called Bard, which was supposed to be the competitor to ChatGPT, Gemini is actually expected to greatly outperform ChatGPT because of its multi-modal capabilities, such as reading images, generating text and codes, with a level of quality never seen before. Now, they haven't said that much about this new model or when they're gonna release it, because it's still in training, but when they do, I think it's gonna be very impressive. At least way better than the initial Bard. And speaking of Bard, Google then announced that Bard is not only now smarter thanks to the brand new Palm 2 model running in the background, but that they also removed the waitlist, making Bard available to more than 180 countries. Which is great, but apparently if you live in Europe, you cannot have access to Bard right now. Why they did that, I'm not sure, probably because of some EU laws, but as of right now, if you live in Europe and you want to try it out, you're gonna have to use a VPN. Now also, thanks to Palm 2, Bard is now way better at coding and can easily export the finished code into a Google Colab doc or export a simple email draft directly to Gmail or Google Docs. Then they also show the addition of Bard Plus tools, which is basically like GPT-4 plugins where third-party companies can create apps to work in collaboration with Bard. Now they haven't showed a lot of examples for now, but this is something that will definitely bring a lot of values to third-party companies and users alike. Also, Bard will receive in the following months a very interesting Google Lens feature that will allow it to analyze an image, understand it on a deep level, and generate text based on that image. So for example... So if you're looking to have some fun with your fur babies, you might upload an image and ask Bard to write a funny caption about these two. A lens detects that this is a photo of a goofy German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever, and then Bard uses that to create some funny captions. If you ask me, I think they're both good boys. So yeah, this is a very interesting and cool functionality 
functionality that no other big LLMs have right now. So yeah, pretty cool. They also showed a very cool implementation of the different Google services working together with Bard to make research and collaboration easier, such as this. Imagine I'm 18 and I need to apply to college. So I'm thinking about colleges, but I'm not sure what I want to focus on. I'm into video games and what kinds of programs might be interesting. Okay, this is a helpful head start. Animation looks pretty interesting. Now I could ask, help me find colleges with animation programs in Pennsylvania. Okay, great, that's a good list of schools. Now to see where these are, I might now say, show these on a map. Here, Bard's gonna use Google Maps to visualize where the schools are. This is super helpful and it's exciting to see that there's plenty of options not too far from home. Now let's start organizing things a bit. Show these options as a table, structured and organized, but there's more I want to know. Add a column showing whether they're public or private schools. Perfect, this is a great start to build on. And now let's move this to Google Sheets so my family can jump in later to help me with my search. And in addition to all of that, Google have also partnered with Adobe to make text-to-image generation easier. So very soon, inside Bard, you will be able to input a prompt, and in the background, it will use the Adobe Firefly technology to generate an image from scratch, and all of that without leaving Bard. Exactly like DALI 2 inside Microsoft Bing. So next, Google had an entire section dedicated to the use of AI inside Google Workspace and how AI will be implemented deeply into these tools, which they call it Duet AI. And I gotta say, they really showed a lot. Like for example, right inside Google Docs, just like the Help Me Write Gmail AI, you will be able to input an instruction and then get AI to write it for you automatically or generate an entire table inside Google Sheet. Or even generate images for your slides without leaving the Google Workspace. They have also introduced a new tool called Sidekick that will be able to read your work inside your Google Docs and then provide you suggestions as you write or even generate images based on your work. And I gotta say, personally, as someone who uses these tools every day, such as Google Doc or Google Sheets, seeing generative AI getting implemented into those tools in such a non-intrusive way is actually really super exciting. Now keep in mind of course that these tools will only be available to paid customers and we still don't know for how much but still pretty cool. So next Google showed all the improvements that AI will bring when using the search engine because of course Google is a search engine before anything else and they showed just how much more info you will get during search, all the smart suggestions it will bring or how much better your shopping experience will be when using the search engine etc etc. Now to be honest this was not really my favorite part of the presentation presentation, it's not really my cup of tea, you know, but yes, again, it's really cool. So then they talked about Google Cloud and they showed a bunch of AI models that can be customized and fine-tuned on your own data, including a very interesting partnership with Character AI, the current leader in AI character role-playing, where you'll be able to create and train a new character with your own data. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Then Google also said that new generative AI models are coming to Vertex AI, its fully managed Google Cloud AI service, with the arrival of image Google text to image model, Kodi, which is basically Google's answer to GitHub's Copilot that can generate code in over 20 languages, and finally Chirp, a speech to text AI model that supports over 100 languages. And there is of course Duet AI, the set of integrated tools that we saw earlier for Google Workspace that will also be integrated inside Google Cloud, which again will make code generation and code writing much easier. So coming next, Google showed Project Tailwind, which almost sounds like a secret army project, but in reality it's a pretty impressive tool that basically works as a notebook that will gather all of your notes, quickly create a private AI model with an expertise in that information which you can then use to organize, summarize or even brainstorm ideas about your specific subject. So yeah, really really impressive. And then finally Google insisted that their goal with AI is to create a safe set of AI tools for users with the goal of using AI responsibly because of AI insane capabilities and potential danger. For example, they showed how a simple yet innocent technology like image generation can be used to easily influence people's perception of reality in historical facts. They also showed how a more powerful yet still innocent technology can be used to create deepfakes, such as the Universal Translator. Universal Translator is an experimental AI video dubbing service that helps experts translate a speaker's voice while also matching their lip movement. Let me show you how it works with an online college course created in 
partnership with Arizona State University. What many college students don't realize is that knowing when to ask for help and then following through on using helpful resources is actually a hallmark of becoming a productive adult. Muchos universitarios no comprenden que saber cuándo pedir ayuda y usar recursos útiles es en realidad una clave para convertirse en un adulto productivo. We use next generation translation models to translate what the speaker is saying, models to replicate the style and the tone, and then match the speaker's lip movements. Then we bring it all together. Which, as you can see, a simple cool tech used for students or for learning can be used to create realistic deepfakes and used for nefarious means. Now, although most of the tools Google showed in the presentation are still in development and not available to the general public unless you sign up to the waiting list, there is actually one tool that you can try right now for free. And it is, of course, Google Bard. Now, Google Bard right now should be running with the newest Google's LNM called Palm 2, which should make it way faster and way more precise. So just for fun, let's take a look at what it can do. All right, so for example, example, let's test the creative capabilities of Bard, and let me write something like, write a short story about an AI overlord taking over the world. And I got something like this, which I mean is not bad, it's definitely pretty cool, but one thing that is very impressive is how fast Bard was able to generate this story. Like this is definitely faster than ChatGPT, or at least faster than GPT-4. Now next if I ask some very simple translation, with of course my legendary sentence, translate this sentence from English to French. Are you crazy? It's too cold outside. I don't want any ice cream, I would rather drink something hot like cocoa. And we got something like this, which of course, since this is Google, the translation is pretty much perfect. I mean, no real surprise there. So now if I ask some very simple math questions, solve this equation and explain your steps, 2y minus 12 equals minus 16, which if you watch my previous LNM videos, you know that they have a lot of trouble with this equation, which of course is absolutely no problem for Bard. We got a super detailed explanation of the whole equation, of the whole solution, and we even got a little TLDR at the end, quickly showing the steps. Very impressive. Next, I'm gonna very quickly ask a very simple coding question, which is to write the code for an HTML page with a button that when pressed, changes the background to a random color. And we got something like this very quickly, which looks very, very good. So now if I copy the code and I put it inside my HTML file, then save the file, and if I launch it, I get a very simple HTML page with a change background button that if I press on it, does change the background to a random color. Very, very easy. So yeah, yeah, Bard is definitely very impressive. I would say pretty much on the same level as GPT-4. Now I could make a more in-depth video comparing it to GPT-4 if you want to, but also do not forget that just like GPT-4, this model is of course heavily censored. So don't even try playing around with it. You will probably get banned. Now I gotta say, after watching this conference, I'm definitely super impressed by Google. I mean, when you look at the fiasco that was the previous conference just a few months ago, you will never have imagined that they would be able to come up with a bunch of insanely revolutionary AI tech so quickly. And yet, they did. And on one side, I'm happy to see how fast things are advancing in the AI tech and all the cool AI tools that are coming. On the other side, I'm also a bit sad to see that once again, it is only one big corporation holding all the power to themselves. Like, how are you supposed to compete when you have a giant like Google making so much progress so fast? I mean, you just can't. It's impossible. They have unlimited resources, unlimited budget. They really are unstoppable. But I mean, yeah, it is how it is. Again, as I said, I'm super happy to see all of these new tools coming out and I can't wait to try them out. But I guess I just wish that there were a bit more competition in this space because when there is competition, the consumer gets a better deal. And again, that's that's always a good thing for us. So definitely let me know what you think of the conference, if there are tools that you are excited to try, and also what do you think of the current Google Bard, because I mean, if you can, try it out, it's free, it's pretty cool, and I personally cannot wait to try these new tools. And there we are with folks, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, thank you also so much to our Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome, you people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye.